Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Well, welcome back, everybody. Another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast episode thank you so much for tuning in today and supporting this podcast on whatever streaming platform you so choose uh to all of my uh patrons on patreon youtube channel members subscribers friends uh extended family kin and kith alike my heart genuinely appreciates your ongoing and constant support don't forget to uh check out the you know link tree link that is posted in all of the video and podcast uh, description or show notes for all of the various other ways uh, that you can support um, Midgard Musings as a channel and, and as a brand and as well as this uh, this podcast. So um, we've got another listener request or listener. Um, yeah, it's a, it was a question that was posed, you know, directly to me via an email. <clears throat> That email, if you ever got, if you guys ever want to write into the podcast show, it is uh, Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com. Um, and this, uh, this uh, was, uh, you know, it was like a two parter, you know. <clears throat> um, one was questions about a rune book or rune books. Um, and then the second question has to do with some, an interesting topic that I think a lot of us can relate to. And that is the topic of tattoos. Uh, specifically when we have um, tattoos that may show our, you know, connection or, or potential possible devotion to another religion, talking like, you know, religious art, that sort of thing. Um, but this, uh, this fellow wrote in uh, specifically asking about something that has also uh, meaning to him and his close family. So the question wasn't necessarily positioned as uh, intended to be a podcast episode, but I did respond back to him and I said, hey, if it's cool with you, um, I'd like to include your question on a future podcast episode. And that's where we are today. We're going to have Dingo, who was on last week's episode. You guys should be familiar with him by now. He's uh, our tribe's Gothi. And uh, <clears throat> we just uh, came back from a, a camping event uh, this past weekend. So uh, me and our law speaker, Patrick, were out on um, on some family lands in Tennessee and uh, a little bit south of Columbia. And uh, so he's going to be joining us again today um, to talk about this particular topic and, you know, see what else and what other things that we got going on. Um, so I think that uh, that sounds about like the time for us to just go ahead and bring the dingo, release the dingo. Unleash. Yeah. Unleash the dingo, release the dingo. So anyway, uh, this is another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. My name is Jesse, a Midgard Musings production. Let's give a big warm welcome to Dingo. All right. Yeah, welcome back to the show, uh, my man, my brother, Dingo. Uh, welcome back to yet another fun and exciting Random Heathen Ramblings episode. Um, so good to have you back here. Oh, yeah. Always we, glad uh, to be here. We... Uh, <clears throat> 
<clears throat> I was telling everybody before you came on about the camping thing that we did, uh, which is I've been talking about Seeger Bloat coming up, which I made a post on the on the Facebook page. And it was quite a long one. It was one of those, you know, things that, you know, the Twitter restrictions don't uh, allow you to say everything that you want to say. So if you guys are following me on Facebook and Instagram, you would have seen the post about Seeger Bloat and some of the historical, uh, you know, references to the the holiday. It's actually one of the three uh, recorded you know, major bloats of the year um, that uh, that we know of that were held, you know, by arch heathens, you know, pr prior to the Christianization of of the regions and such. And yeah, so we're doing that um, coming up in April. But uh, as we've done in the past, we typically like to get up to the property where we'll do our thing and, of course, prepare wood and make sure that everything's, you know, in order as it were that you know no major like trees have blown down across the circle or across the creek or anything major that we have to do which fortunately uh it was it was all in, in really good condition um yeah, it and a helped lot of, us if anything there was a lot of deadfall that was a yeah. wave but not too far away yeah so you know we go up into the woods and we we got we i, I like this little tradition that we've established you know it's like uh the, that that line from Step Brothers, where they're in the Dale and Brennan are in their bedroom making bunk beds, and then is do I hear a drill? No, Dale, no power tools. You know, <laughs> we don't bring any power tools out there to procure no. the, the 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 resources. You know, I mean, it's all hand saws and axes and the uh, our brute My strength. back and shoulders are living proof currently. <laughs> still, are, are you still sore? Yeah, uh, just a touch, <laughs> but. Yeah yesterday was rough at work I, I will say that yeah but it's oh, worth yeah. it I was, I was i was like hobbling around yesterday um uh, my uh my my legs from because like we also took a little hike up the ridge um with with you with kaya and patrick yeah and, thank you kaya yeah that was <laughs> you know man like the next day she was all you know let's uh let's go on another hike and i'm like no no, I will not. I can't. Even if I thought it would be fun, I'm like, my body's like, the hell you will. <laughs> I had all I could do just to tear down my tent and 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 pack everything up. And yeah, I mean, that's what I explained to her. I was like, let, let, let's let's tear down camp first and then <laughs> figure out. Yeah. And then like I think I, I think when I got back to the house um on Sunday, I was in bed by like nine little after nine o'clock and i pretty much slept all the way through the night um and didn't wake up until my alarm went off at like seven the next morning i was like zonked out just and it's so it's like a good a good a good like pre-ritual ritual you know just getting on the land and, and doing all of the work and i don't know i think we talked about it last week where you know um it, ritual interruptions where it's like we, uh, we, we, we had talked about the, <clears throat> the event itself, the ritual itself is almost just like the ceremonial parts of it. You know, we get into that ritual frame of mind or that ritual state of mind, even prior to the day of, or the event, you know, because we're, we're up there interacting with the land and reacquainting ourselves with the Vatir and doing all the things, you know, um, yeah so well, yeah the, it was the journey ends up being the the most important part many times yeah which i uh i like that you know and i like that we get to share that sort of thing here for everybody that's listening and watching because um i think a lot of where people can get hung up on is what do i do for the ritual you know and while that is to be considered and there's there's an important aspect to that um i think it's uh of, of equal or more perhaps more importance to you know <clears throat> set your path and and like put the coordinates in the gps and figure out the journey there before you get there and that's that's where you're gonna get most of the benefit from things is is like you say the journey you never know what you're gonna run into <laughs> yeah yeah For sure absolutely and it's you know both physically and metaphysically i think mm -hmm. you know um 
there's just so much that can happen in the world and spaces around us. Um, but we did get a chance to, you know, have a good fire and we had some really awesome food, you know, we, we cooked and that's, a, that's in itself, you know, we've talked, um, maybe not on this, well, was it on the podcast? We had Wyatt or was it was on one of his live streams or, or something, Wyatt Coverdale. Um, he's been on the show a few times. We were talking about like the definitions of magic. And I think either you or me or somebody had brought up like, you know, cooking, you know, yeah, yeah. being in the kitchen is, is a form of magic because, you know, your, your intent is to put all these ingredients together into a pot, a cauldron or whatever, a pan, however you want to, right. And, and your, your intent is to make something delicious and, and make something edible and for the purpose of feeding yourself and your family or your people and uh, so in, in, in that sort of way, there's there's some magic involved because, you know, you might you might overcook something. There's there's some calculations that need to be taken into consideration with all that you're doing. So there's like the very yeah, literal is alchemy. Right. It, it, it's it's definitely a chemical process. It's, it's very, uh, you know. It's, and it's very much like a kitchen. It runs like a lab. The same kind of procedures you have recipes so to speak you have procedures yeah ways that certain tests are run ways that certain dishes are cooked and you follow that in yep. suit and there you go everybody has their place on prep or line or whatever you know yeah you know and the uh that 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 also touches on the whole ritual prior like the pre-ritual ritual you know like we're doing more magic work without even really calling it that by starting a fire and you know cooking food and setting up camp and doing all these various things that are you know survivalist type stuff i mean i'm not trying to like every everyone has a hand in building the fire everyone has a hand in setting up camp everyone has a hand in the pot yeah of stew yep <laughs> i remember that too man because yeah. i was like Dingo, me and you, like we cut up the, the, we prepped, you know, like you did most of the prep and I added some ingredients and then we carried everything out there and Patrick was there. I'm like, Patrick, you need, here's the spoon or no, here's the jug. You know, you add the water, you do this, you do that. everybody has their, you know, yeah. hands in it and stuff. And uh, so, you know, there's that, it, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And it, you know, it's, it's where my mind was at this whole time, you know, it was thinking about the event coming up and thinking about what it means, you know, celebrating victories, you know, and uh, I feel like, you know, so much of just having this kind of a, of a, of a, of a, an extended family unit is a victory to be celebrated because Absolutely. You know, not a lot of people get along well enough to want to hang out like that. You know what I mean? And, and it's, yeah. it's kind of one of those rare and beautiful things that should be celebrated. And I feel it should, you know, is, is a victory, especially in now, nowadays where everything is so surface level, superficial, you know, um, and then there's a, a lot of um, there's a, there's a lot of chaos, uh, miscommunication, uh, dysfunction mm -hmm. these days. Um, clashing, yeah. you know, it, it's all about the the black and white. And if everybody puts their hand in the pot, it's all gray, mm -hmm. you know. And that's where life really is. I think uh, it's not so much this or that or good or evil and or you know whatever us versus them yeah it has <clears> to be that way i feel like you know and that's a great point that you bring up because um this is this wasn't even the topic of today's podcast which we'll get into in just a minute uh, or just a little bit but it's an interesting point to bring up you know if <clears throat> if if all of the hands aren't in the pot together then there can't be that symbiotic relationship that that happens, you know, because again, it's, it's like, Oh, one's inside and one's outside, you know? So you've got those forces yeah. on the outside clashing with what's going on in there. And because they're not part of it, because those forces aren't part of it, there's, there's, like you're saying this, this misunderstanding, this confusion, this, this, you know, chaos that takes place. And it's like, Hey, you know, take the time you take a moment and get your hands in the pot a bit and learn the ways and, and, and maybe, you know, nobody knows, no, you're, no, nothing's going to bite you in there. Maybe a little nibble yeah. here and there, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not nothing damaging. So, well, and not even with, you know, uh, spiritual practices or, but just 
interpersonal no, I mean that in the literal sense. Yeah. And, and, and emotional uh, situations and things like that, you know, like the, there tends to be this us versus them mentality, but yeah, I don't think there's enough time focused on defining what us or them is. And if everyone has their hand in the pot, that's us. That's your people that everyone has made themselves involved. And, you know, we're all family. We can, we can work through this if you come to that kind of understanding. Yeah, you have to approach it in that way. <clears throat> you have to be willing and wanting to even get your hands in the pot. Yeah. You, know, you can't force somebody to put their hands in there and, and you can't make somebody think some way or another that they're not willing or wanting to think. But again, it's like, well, this isn't going to, this machine's not going to function. This family's not going to thrive if we're at, you know, opposing ends of each other. And that's just, that's like a rule of thumb, I think, for just about anything, you know? Yeah. Um, so, which kind of is a neat segue into the actual topic. So, right. <laughs> Funny that that came up you know and then the way that it did so we uh i mentioned in the end you know before you came on that a uh, fellow wrote into the sh to the podcast I actually just wrote an email to me and his initial uh question you know it's like a two-parter and he was asking about you know some rune book resources and he was saying he has a rune book by lisa chamberlain which i think i've read it's runes for beginners it's all right it's you know it's a lot of the books that you find nowadays are going to have a lot of you know, new agey type undertones, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I gave him some recommendations of definitely like um, JM's book, JM Olson's book, um, which he has. I, I, I'll, I'll put it in the sh uh, description in the show notes just because I can't remember. I know it's on Amazon. I just don't remember the name of it offhand. But he wrote a great um, book for learning the runes. And, um, you know, so for those that are interested in wanting to, to get something that I would recommend knowing that it's, you know, from a good source and there's that, but the main body of his, of, of his email, and this is from Brandon, by the way, I'll keep his last name, uh, unanimous, anonymous, not unanimous, anonymous. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, Brandon <coughs> asked about, um, he's wondering if he should keep a tattoo. He says it's a cross with his, uh, grandfather's birth date and death date so it's like a memorial piece i'm assuming um he says he got it before he started his journey down this path of, of heathenry i'm assuming or paganism of sorts and currently see it as a way to honor him since he was practically uh his father while he was alive while he, you know brandon's uh grandfather was like his his father to him i feel like i shouldn't care about what others think about it since that's how i venerate him but i'm someone who when you give me flack about family i don't necessarily respond nicely do you think i should get it covered up and find a new design for it or do you think i should just try finding a way to turn that negative reaction into something positive and that's what his what his question was so i gave him a short response but i asked him said you know this i think this would be something great to talk about because a lot of us, I mean, we got tattoos, you know, and some of our tattoos maybe were uh, put on us prior to starting uh, our path in heathenry, or maybe, you know, we, we put something on ourselves that is now, you know, a permanent mark uh, prior to uh, a pagan path or whatever. But yeah, I mean, so I felt like it would be a neat topic just to kind of go over. And I already know, right, like yours and my, like we've talked about this, Dingo, about the the response. And you know, nothing really too heavy to elaborate on it, but, um, you know, <laughs> your response, right. Dingo, I mean, I, I, I sent him my initial response and I can elaborate on it, but with what he's asking about, you know, should I cover it up or should I just leave it and try to find a, you know, turn the negative into something positive, which I don't know what the negativity is he's should, talking about. Should you cover it up? Absolutely not. You are honoring your grandfather with that. Yeah, and it would be a disgrace to him if you were to cover it up like period mm -hmm. he got you to where you are he especially since he helped raise you a big part of that 
you should absolutely honor him in that manner. Um, it, it, that tattoo is not about you, it's about him. And so absolutely keep it. If anyone says otherwise, I mean, that's kind of their problem. Um, but, you know, I'll speak for as a Norse pagan that you can have them talk to me if they have a problem <laughs> with that. Right. Um, you know, like, uh, no, man, like, like, absolutely keep that. That's part of who you are, it's part of your family. You know, you're doing something different, and that's okay. That's perfectly okay. And he says something along the lines of, uh, you know, he, he says when someone gives him flack about his family, I don't respond. I don't necessarily respond nicely. You know, uh, there, there's, there's decisions that we can make. There's choices that we can make. And I think that your, that your, that your, the, the defense that you have, or the, or the love and and the, the respect and the honor that you have for your family, as, as being something so fierce, is, uh, something that I think that should be commended. You know. It's just a matter of the choices that we make on how we act on certain things. You know, like, is it, is it worth, you know, knocking someone's skull through just because they say something sideways? Probably not, not in today's society. You know what I mean? Back in the day, you know, you talked funky to somebody, then it was like, okay, I'll meet you out here and we're going to duel to the death. And then whoever wins, I own your land and you own mine and all this. We're not in those days anymore. You know what I'm saying? So, right. But you know, defending your family's honor, your loved one's honor, like, sure, I think there's a a place for that, but just within, you know, within a reason. And, uh, uh, you know, so what kind of flack would you possibly get for keeping a tattoo that is a memorial tattoo of your grandfather? So what, that it's a a cross, you know? Um, And and in light of that, and in, in thinking about that, you know, Sure, it's a symbol of Christianity, but it's widely accepted, right, that even the, the pagans who converted to Christianity still kept their pagan beliefs secretly while, you know, getting baptized into Christianity and accepting the new religion of the one true God and all this other kind of stuff, you know. So they, they probably had, you know, things well, I mean, on yeah, themselves. Look, at, look they, at the the Celtic cross with the yeah. circle, you know, like... Oh, yeah, right. it, it's Christian, but we still have the hinge there. Yeah, it looks very much like the sun wheel, you know? And Yeah, and that's the sun wheel. The hinge yeah. is the sun wheel. Yep. So, look at, you know, you can almost look at it that way if you, if you had to or wanted to try to, you know, explain anything to anybody. It's, you know, that's on you. But I don't think that there's I, – I fully 100% agree with you, Dingo, right, that the, you know, the tattoo of uh, – that that's – gonna be something that you remember your departed family by um doesn't matter what the symbol is right shouldn't matter you know um so there's a way to turn a negative a negative reaction into something positive is you know maybe think along those lines you know um it's not about the symbol it's about him and right remembering when his his day of birth and remembering his day of death and that you know he helped shape you into the man that you are now and that you don't ever want to forget that. And that's the commemoration. That's the memorial piece. Um, Absolutely. You know, and I have, I I, I guess your ancestors is very important, you know, whether, whether they were, whether they were terrible or good, they got you to where you are and your ancestors. I mean, even your parents, you know, they, they either gave you a good example or a bad example. And what you do with that is the important thing. You learn what to do or what not to do. But either way, it's an influence. Right. And it's in your blood. It's the orlog. It's something you have to deal with regardless, yeah. whether it be from the community, whether it be from genetic uh, things handed down in uh, psychological disorders or even something as simple as heart disease or diabetes or whatever, you have to deal with what has been handed to you, period. 
but it could be you you could take that you know your your asshole great grandpappy that you know beat the hell out of his slaves and crap you can take that and like i don't i don't like that i don't want to be that screw him that's yeah. just as important saying screw that is just as important as the other you know but yeah regardless you have to deal with it yeah it's like it it, go, it goes back to orlog you know or lay however you want to yeah. pronounce it. it it's it's the layers are there no matter what and you know feeding that part of the well and and adding to those things you know you can either lay layers on top of the muck that eventually just cover that negativity over and you and you build stronger orlog and, and you've and you've done things to kind of counter act the the bad things um or you, you know and, and some people just get a lot more dirt in the well to deal with than others you know um and that's all sure. you know <laughs> that's all dependent on uh decisions and choices like we talked about a moment ago you know the choices that you make it's you know that choice to respond negatively to somebody or not nicely to someone that's giving you flack about it. i mean that's laying a layer down in the well man like that's that that becomes orlog because right that's going to be something that depending on the situation you know other people are going to be witness to and may be impacted by and it's like this domino effect of of a series of events that can take place to to either strengthen or deteriorate your orlog um it's all going in there it's all going in there so it's it's, it's about the choices we make but i appreciate that you know because i mean i've had i've had uh <clears throat> you know tattoos that i've gotten from when i was you know in other relationships that i've had covered up because the meaning behind it was not something i wanted to be reminded of constantly by looking at it you know what i'm saying and right. that is why i feel like covering things up or, or restructuring a design or, or whatever is has its place but for this application if, if it, you know your grandfather brandon is, is the kind of man that was like a father to you then i hope that it's a place that's always visible you know what i mean like i hope it's not and if it is it is what it is but i hope it's like somewhere that everybody can see and that you know you always have that constant reminder you look down at your arm or you you know whatever and it's it's like a constant reminder for you um yeah about him being there for you and making you the man that you are today or helping shape you into the man you are today you know some things don't need to be forgotten and this is one of them so, right. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And I, you know, anybody else that's, you know, listening and watching, maybe you guys have um, some similar, you know, circumstances comment in the video, or if you're watching the, the podcast on the YouTube platform, or um, there'll be a poll that's, that's shared um, on the Spotify platform for, for this sort of thing, engage with the podcast in that sort of way. Um, let us know what you guys think and share your own experiences as well by either commenting down below or writing into the podcast. You can send an email in like Brandon did. That's uh, midgardmusingstn at gmail.com. You can always call in uh, to the Midgard Musings hotline um, and it's 615-671-9832. Just leave a voicemail and share your thoughts. Maybe you have a question that you'd like to have the community hear and uh be aware of so either which way you can have your voice heard on the random heathen ramblings podcast so it's going to be a bit of a short one today but uh a good one you know talk a bit about a bunch of different things and um i don't know anything else that you got to say dingo before we wrap this thing up yeah i think we touched on pretty much everything cool short and sweet yeah, doesn't always have to be, you know, sometimes random ramblings don't have to be an hour long. And uh, so for <laughs> you guys, this Thursday listening uh, convenience, you know, this one was a, a bit of a shorter one, but I hope it was an enjoyable one. And if you did enjoy it, don't forget to engage on the platforms like the video, comment, subscribe, follow, upvote, share, uh, all of those fun things. And be sure to check the link tree link in the description and show notes for all of the ways you guys can support what we do here um, on this podcast. So thank you to my esteemed and honored guest, my friend, my brother Dingo for being another uh, awesome addition to the random heathen ramblings podcast. 
I know Ken is with you, um, your cousin, our another uh, close uh, member and friend of the tribe. Uh, so big shout mm-hmm. out to Ken in the background there. I know you're listening and uh, thanks for being a part of things as well. And until we all talk again, may your ancestors continue to walk with you and may the gods <laughs> smile upon you. So have a great day, everybody. We'll talk again soon. Love y'all.